All right, guys, welcome back. And today we are getting brunch with Jamie Sire. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, we Am fucked I that up. I don't know. Who cares? We're with Jamie Sire, if that like, wasn't clear. And you might know Jamie from ESPN, from Food Network, from Instagram, I guess now. Sure. Everywhere. Just like if you're walking down the street in Williamsburg, maybe you'll see me. Maybe you'll see me. Maybe you'll see me here at Sunday in Brooklyn. <laughs> that's that's true. So, yeah, so we are at Sunday in Brooklyn getting brunch. It's both of our favorites. Mm -hmm. What's funny is like when we were talking about doing this, the two places I had in mind to do it were exactly the two places you texted me about. I did. So it worked out perfectly that we had the same thought of where to go. And we have some pancakes, um, some lox, some eggs, anything delicious. Yeah, it looks, it looks fabulous. And thank you for having brunch with me. Yeah, sure. Thanks <laughs> for inviting me. <laughs> so Jamie, you are from Montana. I am. How in the world <laughs> does someone from Montana end up in Williamsburg? Uh, I'm gonna try and give you like the short answer yeah, like to that the, because the it's cliff notes, yeah, I it's um, I'm from Montana. I went to mm -hmm. school in Washington, worked in California for ten years, moved to Connecticut to to work for ESPN. That ended last year, and yeah, I mean, it, I, I was moving to New York, and I and Williamsburg was, I guess, most appealing to me yeah. just because it's it has, it has a cool vibe. It yeah. also a lot of great restaurants. So mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I, I don't know, like, I feel like I can't even fathom Montana in my brain. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm from New York, I've never lived anywhere else. Like, in my brain, it's just like wilderness and like cows. I don't uh, know, is that like, is sure. that what life is I like mean, there? there are, there are both of those things. <laughs> okay. I actually did grow up on a farm until I was five. <laughs> okay. um, we had, we had like, but like, we had like beef cows, like cattle. Like, What's so, the difference? So like they're raised for slaughter for beef, like not for milk like milking. Yeah. Okay. All right, I gotcha. Although, but, um, but yeah, until I was five. Okay. Um, my, and then my dad was a wheat farmer until okay. a couple of years ago. So right. there's also a lot of like just rolling like nothing of like <laughs> wheat farms or just, uh -huh. you know, a whole lot of like open space. We'll how, say that. how close to you were you to your closest neighbor? Okay, well, so <laughs> it's not like <laughs> it's not like I we told all you, I, I literally live. Have no idea. I don't there know. There are like cities and that kind. There of are. Yes. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so um, no, like w once I moved off the farm um, when I was five, you know. Uh huh. No, we lived in a city in, in Great Falls. Oh. Um, it's like sixty thousand people or oh. something. Yeah. So I, it's I, like, okay. So like only a million people live in the whole state. I think okay. it is, which is a giant state. It's mm -hmm. probably like the I think it's like the fourth biggest mm -hmm. one in the United States. Um, but yeah, I mean there's cities and that yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> so like growing up there, you know, we don't like use the outhouse to go to, go to the bathroom, this, and this is we I'm have thinking. running water and electricity. <laughs> Are there Jews? <laughs> Uh, there's a couple. Oh, okay. I, there was right. a girl, there. Uh, Polly, in my high school. I remember <laughs> Polly was Jewish. <laughs> did she have a bat mitzvah? Um, I'm sure she did. I feel like I didn't know her until maybe like maybe she had already done uh, the yeah. 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 Okay. So, right. but I she was in theater with me okay. and yeah. All right. Well then, so how do you go from Montana to sports TV? Like, what was that like growing up? Were you a big sports fan? Was it like I want to be an anchor? Like, how did that transition happen? Um, I I I did enjoy sports. I'm mm. very short, as you, I don't know if you can tell from sitting down, but um, yeah, I, it didn't work out for me to be like a you know, super okay. like yeah. athlete in high school. So I kind of transitioned to the theater. It's mm -hmm. like a drama geek. Um, and I really liked that aspect. I also realized I probably wasn't good enough to like, be like a professional actress. So it seemed like television was like a natural like progression. Yep. Um, I originally started out doing news actually okay. and didn't like it because I didn't like covering like fires and murders. You were doing like and, real news. Yeah, real okay, news right. and uh, didn't enjoy that so I just decided sports seemed more fun. Oh, let's start digging in. I mean, this all this amazing food is in front of us. Okay. It's sad to see it, you know, get cold. Yes. Um, but okay, so you're... Oh, so, so the daily, daily so you're story. Doing, yeah, so you're doing local news yes. in Montana. Like what, like what's the daily news there? Like, <laughs> uh, like what's happening? Um, I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, like little festivals, rodeos. I covered a lot of rodeos. Um, <laughs> like I'm not joking. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no rodeo, like, well, sports especially was like high school football. And mm -hmm. we had like a, a rookie ball team for, um, the White Sox, I think it was. Um, yeah. But when I was doing news, like I did my two internships there, and then um, and then that was also my first job out of out of college. But yeah, I mean there was a lot of like just random like those state fairs in Great Falls, Montana. That's a really yeah. big deal. Mm -hmm. Go live there every day during the state <laughs> fair for like two weeks. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, it's a lot of little stuff. But that said, I still had to like go cover fires, go cover, like I remember there was like a fatal accident like right outside town one time mm. and I had to like go cover that. And I was like, this is not for yeah, me. This yeah. is not my personality, whatever. So sports was a natural fit because mm -hmm. You know, it's fun. Someone's winning. Someone's always happy. You know, it's like uh, sure. I mean, yeah. someone's always sad and losing, yeah, yeah. also. But I guess but, you can look at the positive side of it. And you still get to have like the storytelling aspect, the mm -hmm. the people stories, and that kind of thing, which I really enjoy. That was the thing I liked about news mm -hmm. was doing the human interest type stuff. So yes, yeah, so I ended up doing sports for a long time. So then you went to San Francisco and did sports. I should end up taking a bite. Like this is, <laughs> this is really bites, hard. Bites. <laughs> I don't know. I need to learn. Eat something soft. It's mm -hmm. not crunchy. I'm like crunching on like pickled vegetables right now. Um, I did end up in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I was in San Diego before that. Okay. So I lived in San Diego for five years and then San Francisco for five mm -hmm. years. Doing sports like at the local level and then a regional level. I mean kind of, you know, the, the progression was okay. pretty natural to ESPN. Yeah, so then how, how did that come about ESPN? Um, I don't really, I, mean, I remember flying out and I had to do like basically an audition, like an on-camera audition, which was very nerve wracking mm -hmm. because you know, you get there and you're, you know, basically prepping a little, you know, sports segment. And then they put you in the studio and you hear like the, the sports center, like da da da, da like for the first time and, and then you're on camera. So um, you do that. And then I had interviews all day long uh, with different people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think we got an offer maybe a week or two later. And yeah, I moved all the way to the East Coast, which was a pretty big, <clears throat> pretty big move uh -huh. um, but I've kind of moved all over you know for my career so it's uh, that kind of stuff doesn't bother me well what one of my favorite one of my favorite stories uh, that I still repeat to people that you told me mm -hmm. was about your flight over to Connecticut <laughs> yes and your cat my cat please please repeat that story. okay so <laughs> I have an orange tabby cat um, his name is Mays after Willie Mays so I got him when I was living in San Francisco covering the Giants um, he is a handful. Um, he's very <laughs> like, mischievous, I guess we'll call him. Um, but I was very nervous about the flight and the move and everything. Uh, so I got, I got like a, I guess a, like it's sedative. Kitty, kitty, kitty Xanax. Xanax, no? yes, yeah, Xanax, Xanax for the cat. Um, <laughs> and from my vet, and you know, I, I tested it out on him before, and he was fine. And so. I was ready to go. Um, I was very embarrassed to like take him on the plane because I don't know, it's just like somebody traveling You're with a cat. Person, yeah, yeah, I'm like that person. Mm -hmm. So um, we went through the security, which was fine. I was really nervous he was gonna like jump out. He was fine. So everything was going great. So I was very happy about that. <laughs> I do remember when we were getting on the plane. I'm like, have my coat over the carrier so no one could see, but like people still saw. It. And this guy behind me, a couple. People behind me was like, I don't, I didn't know you could bring cats on airplanes. And the stewardess was, or the flight attendant was like, Oh yeah, I mean some people have comfort animals. <laughs> <laughs> and I got, I was so mad. I wanted to be like, No, it's not a comfort animal. But anyways, I just, I went and sat down. It was a red eye. I figured that would be like a nice time for him to sleep. Put him under the seat. Think we're good to go. Thankfully, I didn't fall asleep because then I hear like some rumbling going on in the, in the like the aisle. Somebody's talking about a cat, and I just thought they were just talking about me again. And then finally, the flight attendant gets on the overhead speaker, and she says, if you have a cat on board, can you please ring your call button? So again, I'm thinking, like, why do they need me, whatever? So I ring the call button, and she comes over. And I said, oh, I'm the one with the cat. You asked, like, for me to ring the call button. She's like, you have a cat. I said, yeah. She says, well, he's out. And I said, no, he's not. Like, in my head, I'm like, oh, it must be the other person on the plane with a cat. So I reached down. Of course, he's not there. He had chewed his way out of the cat carrier. And she's like, he's six rows up. So I go up. He's sitting in this dude's lap. And he's on the, the kitty Xanax. So he kind of like looks up at me like really like drunk looking. And he's just like kind of like, what? Like I, that's what I imagined he said in his head. Um, I was so embarrassed. Everyone's giggling. So then I take him back and I had to like stay up all night with him because he kept every 20 minutes would, would try and get out. Uh -huh. And then the flight attendant comes over to me too. When I get back to my seat, she's like, you know, you're not allowed to let him out. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously, you're not allowed to let him out. I'm so sorry. And uh, and then the final part of that story is just when we when we landed finally, the lady in front of me is looking behind me and she's like, oh, he's so cute. And I said, I'm so sorry. Did he like crawl under you? She's like, I don't know. I was asleep. She's like, but my husband was the one that grabbed him. 
I said, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And she's like, oh no, not a problem. He's a cat person. I said, oh, thank, like, thank uh -huh. God. Like, because a lot of people hate cats. She's like, yeah, we just don't have one because he's allergic. <laughs> so of course my cat found the allergic guy and also escaped on this plane. It was so embarrassing. We did not sleep, um, neither one of us. I went to bed at like 7 p.m. By the time I got to Connecticut Kit and uh -huh. moved in. So mm -hmm. I tell really long stories. By the way, I have a few up in It's fine, this is fine, this is, this is fine. This is, what, this is what, why we're here. My friends call them yarns. They're like, Jamie, <laughs> sire, wrap it up. Wrap up the yarn. <laughs> it's too long. Anyway, but so okay, so you're in Connecticut. Yes. You're at ESPN. What was it like? So I, I used to work in sports TV, as yes. you know, and I know some people know. Um, and I always thought it was interesting the the female anchors and mm -hmm. female sports people, they definitely got treated differently. And I don't think it was like just from speaking to them, like it wasn't an outright sexism thing towards yeah. them from athletes, from fans, from whoever. It was just sort of like I don't know. They always just felt different. It felt like people thought they were dumb. Yeah. Kind of thing. Did you like experience any of that? I or, definitely. Like, I mean, not like at the company. No, of course but, not from the company, but just but, like in general, like yeah, on Twitter. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. I think, you know, the thing I always said um, when I was in that world was <clears throat> just, you know, you had to, like, you had to know just as much as all the guys, but also like even more. So, yeah. Like you couldn't screw up a name. You couldn't because if a if a woman did it, it was like, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Right. Whereas if a guy did it, it's like, ah, oh, whatever. Like he messed up, not a big deal. Yeah. So I think there was definitely a, a lot more pressure mm -hmm. just to be perfect all the time yeah. because you felt like you had to be because any small misstep would like, you would lose some credibility. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, there was a lot of pressure, but you know, that said, you know, we also got, sometimes we got better opportunities because yeah. of our, you know, mm -hmm. because we were female or whatever. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it wasn't too bad. I think by the time I got to ESPN, it had gotten better. Like there's right. so many women right. doing sports broadcasting, but um, but there's still that pressure for mm -hmm. sure. So you get you're at ESPN. You end up hosting Sports Center AM when you sort of like reshifted all their Sports Centers. Yes. How did that come about? And like where where we were, what happened with that? Yeah, they. Um, I mean, up until that point, the the first <clears throat> Sports Center didn't start till 9 a.m. So mm -hmm. you got to think like. The East Coast is waking up and maybe catching up on their sports that they that they didn't see the night before when they were in bed. Um, so it kind of just made sense to have a live version of that instead of you know getting the rear from LA that's been airing for the last six hours mm -hmm. or whatever. So yeah, they kind of put a team together. I was one of five people that they kind of was kind of like an ensemble like morning show mm -hmm. vibe, but also still with Sports Center and all the highlights and everything. So it was it was fun. It was I mean I, I helped launch a network in San Francisco and then helped launch the show at ESPN. So it was exciting to kind of yep. be part of like mm -hmm. two of those things. Um, yeah, I mean unfortunately, <laughs> you know they they uh, made other decisions about right. that show and and and. ESPN and the talent in general. So, but it was it was a fun year. I loved mm -hmm. our crew. I loved like all of the anchors I worked with. We all got along. We're like we were actually just texting all like the other day yeah. because we all still like feel like family. I guess. Well, it's crazy. Now the show it doesn't even exist. And they just launched a brand new show this week. Well, it still exists. Yeah, they did. On ESPN too. Yeah, they, it's yeah. on ESPN too. And then right. there's a brand new show, another morning show. Get up. Yes, get up. Did you watch that? I did not. Okay. <laughs> have you watched ESPN at all since leaving? A little bit, okay. yeah. I mean, here's the thing. You know, I used to have to get up at 3.45 in the morning, mm -hmm. and I'm not a morning person, so now I sleep in a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, this is, from, this is an early brunch. To 10. Yeah. You can't get up for that. <laughs> Listen, you know what, Jeremy? <laughs> I don't think we we're like gonna criticize my sleeping fine, schedule fine, on this show. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, I, I watch a little bit, but mm. um, it's been kind of nice to take like sports. I like, you know, breathe yeah. sports, mm -hmm. eat sports, like everything with sports for so long. It's been nice to kind of take a step back and just kind of be a fan again yeah. and not have to be like, okay, how are we gonna cover this on, on the show in the morning or yeah. staying up? late to, to watch the end of the national championship games, but only getting like two hours of sleep, yeah. that kind yeah. of thing, so. I mean, I, I went through the same thing when I left sports, like I needed a break. Because yeah. it, it, you're right, like it became a job, you sort of became like, wasn't fun anymore. Mm -hmm. And it certainly needed to take a step back. And I don't even think I've ever sort of gotten that fandom back yeah. of what I had. But it's at least hard, like, right? Because, like I, I really don't watch ESPN at all anymore. <laughs> I watch I watch Get Up. Well, that's like, the problem, right? That's why we all got laid well, off. Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's your fault. No, I'm just uh, kidding. Um, 
But okay, so then you left ESPN, mm -hmm. and then uh, Food Network happens. Yeah. So uh, how did that come to be? Well, I'd already um, started like dabbling with them a little bit. I had I uh, taped an episode of Beat Bobby Flay. I had taped um, Food Network Star. I was a guest judge mm -hmm. last season um, while I was still at ESPN. So they just hadn't aired yet, and so I already kind of you know had met some people, and this opportunity came up uh, for Iron Chef Showdown. They needed a, a new floor reporter, so I auditioned. And yeah, I got the gig and it was super fun. We did 10 episodes and um, that was a really, really great experience. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was kind of fun for me because I kind of likened it to you know, sideline reporting, mm -hmm. except for like a food competition. You, are you out there for notes? Yeah, I had notes. Yeah. I mean, it was really, I mean, you and you're kind of like getting in and out quickly, mm -hmm. trying to like not bother them while they're cooking yeah. and like competing. Um, it was very much like a sporting event, like the competitive uh -huh. competitiveness as well. Um, so it was fun. It was like a nice transition for me from the sports world to the food mm -hmm. world. So speaking of that season, how freaked out was everyone when Bobby ripped off his shirt <laughs> and he said, this is my last Iron Chef ever? <laughs> Did people just like go? I can imagine the executives and producers just being like, "Oh my well, god!" Well, he really didn't room. tell anybody. I know it's legit. That's so, what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't like a thing. I don't even know if they had really caught the moment on camera because the interesting thing about that was he did it while we were getting ready to do like my part of what my duties were. Um, was 20 minutes in, like the first dish had to be up to the judges, mm -hmm. and so I would kind of go through that first dish with the judges. So we were up getting set for that that segment and all the cameras or mm. most of the cameras were up with me oh, yeah. so they they barely even caught it and then in my ear i hear like hey bobby just took off his like chef's coat and like he has a shirt on so i mean <laughs> we kind of just reacted it was it was cool for me because it was kind of it reminded me of like live tv and something right, yeah. like happening that you weren't expecting so yeah we went and did like a i did a full interview with him about yeah. it i mean it never got it's used. on a cutting room floor somewhere. Yeah, it's somewhere. <laughs> when they but, do like the wrap up of Bobby's Spoon Ever career, they yeah. can have this like little uh, Easter egg or something. Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing, I think the thing that was freaking people out the most was, so it was technically his second battle on that season, mm -hmm. but it was the thanks, I think it was the Thanksgiving, yeah, it was the Thanksgiving battle, which was supposed to be the first episode of the season. <laughs> So he didn't know that though. Like in his mind, it was just like his second one, right? Yeah, and he's done. But it was actually supposed to air before the other one. So it was, it was, it kind of created this like mass. All right. Bit. So, so if it never happened, you do more of the food stuff. You've always had a food blog. I have. Which people, I yeah, guess, I don't had necessarily it. Know about. Um, yeah, e is for eat dot com. <laughs> uh, mostly, it's actually a lot of recipes. Like I do a lot of cooking. I mean, I didn't go to mm -hmm. culinary school, but just kind of have always enjoyed it and like kind of learning new things on yeah. my own. Um, so mm. yeah, I've had that since I think 2011. So okay. yeah, it's I've had that for a while, um, which is kind of nice. It's, you know, when people are like, oh, the sports girl, what does she know about food? Right. I can actually like point them to my blog right. and say, I actually do know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. So um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of food, a lot of travel too. I love to travel. So I, I've kind of started like cataloging uh, all of my travels mm -hmm. and my trips on there as well. Uh, which is kind of fun because like people will be like, oh, I need a recommendation for, you know, South Africa or whatever, and I just send them my blog post. Right. That's <laughs> what I start doing now. I'm like, just here's a link. I really don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I, I put it up online somewhere. Just figure it out. If you have questions, I can answer them. But this, this is all the no. stuff I'm going to give you anyway. Even so. that, I don't really want to answer them. <laughs> <laughs> But so more, you feel like more food stuff is in your future? Yeah, food and or travel. Okay. I think I, I'm, I'm passionate about both. Mm -hmm. I, obviously, you eat also when you're traveling. Yes. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I would love to, to do, you know, kind of a, a, a television show, whether it be on linear, linear television mm -hmm. or digitally, that kind of, you know, follows me and my travels and food. So just kind of need to figure out, like, the right, the right yeah. hook for that. So. Okay. So, Jamie, I want to play a little game. Oh, okay. So this is a game you play on every episode. Okay. Except for the first episode, because I didn't come up with the guy. So you're actually <laughs> the first one to do this. But, oh, I'm so I'm so honored. So the game is this. Okay. So obviously, I I, I know you, but I want to do a little more research. Okay. So you go on Google and you figure out who you are. Okay. So I Googled, I Googled your name. Okay. Uh-oh, I'm scared. <laughs> and as you're typing it up, Google gives you an auto thing yes. of what you think you're looking for. Okay. So I have the top things. Okay, I, I think I I know what some of them are. So that's what I'm gonna get. So I'm gonna get your reaction to some of these. So okay. I will say, some most of these I think make sense. Okay. Except for number one. 
Do you have any idea what the, when you type in Jamie Sire, what is the first thing is that it comes up? nose? Yes. Yeah, okay, so it's people, nose. I people don't hate my nose. Like, it's actually, like, a, that's a sensitive subject, Jeremy. No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't, I don't, because I was thinking, like, do they love her nose? No, do they, they hate, hate it. Why is this a so subject matter? So here's the matter? thing. I broke my nose twice. Okay. Uh, one was, we didn't know it was broken, but I was very young. My dad was, like, trying to tickle me, and I was running away, and I <laughs> smacked into a wall. <laughs> so I had, like, two black eyes, went to school. My teacher's like, what's the matter? And I said, my dad was chasing me, and then they had I to call. into a doorknob. They <laughs> called my parents in for God. a conference, of course. Um, so we didn't know it was broken. Okay. Second time, I was in eighth grade, and I was jumping on trampoline at, like, the end of eighth grade party, you know, at somebody's house. I decided to do a flip and my knees over-rotated, smacked into my nose. So then I went to the doctor and they're like, it's been broken before. So I never really got it straightened. So there's like a bump. Um, okay. And then, yeah, I don't know. Like they think Such like- Such an odd thing. I Where know, does, and people are I mean about it. People are like really? really mean about it on social media. I've, uh -huh. I've learned to just be okay with it. Like there was a point where I was like, maybe I should get it fixed. But then the other thing is people think I've gotten a nose job and just had a really bad one. So it's like this whole thing. There's been discussions on like chat so boards, about anyone's news. That's on Twitter. Yeah, it's crazy. So people odd. are really mean. <laughs> people, are, people are weird. Yeah. I mean like, I don't people are sometimes mean to me, but like okay, my, I know my what nose? This, I think so I know what this one, another one of them is. Right, is yeah. it feet? <laughs> no, I would have because, expected that before nose, but there were no feet. Because did you know that there's like a website called Wiki Feet, <laughs> and literally somebody goes through and finds photos of like people's feet and and creates kind of like a web page. So uh -huh. there's like a Wiki Feet Jamie Sire page, which is super creepy. So stupid. <laughs> feet and nose. So creepy. I don't get it. Yeah. I, I don't get it on any level, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, so next couple of these actually make sense, and I think you'd be happy with. Okay. Um, Jamie Sire, Iron Chef. Oh, cool. That's pretty good. Jamie Sirewich. Oh, yes. I have a I have a sandwich named after me okay. in San Francisco. Well, actually, they have multiple locations, um, but it started in San Francisco at Ike's Place, which mm -hmm. Ike's Place, you may have seen it. It's been featured on you know, tra like Man vs. Food and like those kind of shows. Um, yeah, I have my own sandwich there. It's uh, like fried chicken, uh, like this golden barbecue sauce, ranch, and... Um, is there anything else on it? I don't know. There's also Hot Jamie. Like... Okay. But you can also get on Tuesdays, I think. Just on, only on Tuesdays. Um, yeah, so Sire Witch. That's, that's my That's sandwich. a good one, That's yeah. my sandwich, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go through the rest of them here. Uh, Jamie Sire married? Uh, I, I was married. Okay, so that's yeah, my divorced. weather comes out a yes. lot. Uh, Jamie Sire husband? Uh, no, okay. I mean, not now. <laughs> Jamie Sire ESPN? Yes. Jamie Sire Instagram? Okay. Jamie Sire Twitter? Okay. And Jamie Sire Photos? Okay. I, I think it's a little skewed in this way, thinking about this, only because if I were to try and spell Jamie, I would never guess the way you actually right. spell it. And my guess is most people don't spell it. Like you're yeah. J-A-Y-M-E-E, -E, yeah. which I've never seen before. Yeah, it's phonetically spelled, I like yeah. to tell people. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right, there's probably more searches. There's probably a lot of weird shit of you know, Jamie spelled differently. Also I get, so on my blog I can see like popular searches, mm -hmm. but yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. it's like Jamie Sire naked. I'm like, you're not gonna find that on my Listen, personal if they, blog. If they got to the blog though that way, no, who cares? Sure. Bought them yeah, in. yeah. I mean, it's usually only one, <laughs> like one search that'll bring it in, but it's, it's. I, I laugh every time. I'm like, oh, they're so disappointed. Just all food. <laughs> all right, well, Jamie, thank you for having brunch with me. Thank you. If for you want to find Jamie, you are Jamie Sire everywhere, sort of, right? Well, what is it? yeah, I, I should have kept it consistent, but it's right. Jamie Sire on Instagram. It's J -A -Y just J A Y M E E E E. Yes. Uh, S I R E. On Twitter, it's just Jamie. I got you the got one Jamie. word, Damn. like one name Twitter handle, which is pretty okay. cool. Yeah, I mean, those are the two main ones. I'm on Facebook too. I think it's Jamie.sire.tv. Okay. I don't know. Don't look for her personal page. Yeah, don't. Don't do that. No, <laughs> she I will not accept you. No, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if you like that, uh, maybe you should subscribe to Brunch Boys. Maybe you could like the video. Maybe you could comment below. I don't know, maybe you could share it. That would be pretty cool, yeah, too. Yeah, share yeah, it. Yeah. Do all those things yeah, and keep coming it. back for more. You can go to my, my YouTube page, too. I want to come on now. <laughs> I got to ask him to do mine. <laughs> Can't ask him to do that much more work. <laughs>